Coming to you live with all the sports action from around the UP. Welcome to Friday, Friday Night, Night Frenzy. Frenzy. Frenzy, I'm Jerry Taylor. After nine exhausting and grueling weeks of competition, the high school football season has now reached this point. If you win, you move on. If you lose, season's over. That's what makes this time of the year a boatload of fun. We begin the frenzy in Barragher County. In Division 8, Lakeland and Hubble snuck into the playoffs at 5-4, and four, took on 7-2 lots. Late in the first quarter, the Purple Hornets were driving 4th and 5 from the Lakes 35. Ryan LeBurge rolled out right and found his buddy Ryan full three. Wide open downfield for a gain of 18, more importantly, first down. Lance would finish off the drive with six as Jimmy Beaker follows the pile into the end zone. Extra point good, and the Purple Hornets led 7-0. To the second quarter, here come the Lakeland and Lakes. Tyler Ruse takes the handoff 31 yards to the house. However, there's a smooth problem. A holding penalty wiped off the TD from the scoreboard, but the Lakes offense would overcome that penalty and find the promised land anyway, as Cole Beauchamp takes the misdirection handoff and scores from four yards out, and the Lakes were on the board, trailing 7-6. Lots would have an answer right before the half. Guess who? It's Beaker up the gut for another touchdown to give the Purple and White a 14-6 advantage. On the ensuing kickoff, Ryan LaBarge performed an onside kick in which Lots would recover, and guess who it was? Give me one guess. Jimmy Beaker, and he would score yet another TD on the ensuing drive, and Lance is off to the second round of the playoffs after a 52-34 win over Lakeland and Hubble. And Lance will take on Forest Park next week. The Trojans had their hands full with the Gogebuk Miners tonight, but thanks to a big game by Lee Graff on the ground, 26 carries, 170 yards, and two scores, including a 40-yard scamper, Bill Santilli's club advances to the second round with a 30-16 win over the Miners. Back to the highlights, it was a good one in Division 8 this evening between Munising and North Central. First quarter, it was the Jets on the move. Rob Granquist scrambles to his left, and the old Southpaw would find an open man in the end zone for six. Extra point was good, that made it 7-0 North Central. Later in the quarter, Rob hands the ball off to his cousin, Josh Granquist, and yes, he would find the promised land from a short distance. And the Jets begin to fly away up 14-0, but the Mustangs said, hold your horses, here come the Stangs. Cody Hayes would muscle his way in for six, and suddenly Munising trailed by just a touchdown, 14-7, after the first quarter. Let's jump ahead to the second. Munising once again knocking on the door. Austin Kelto decides to keep the ball, and that was a good decision. Kelto scores from two yards out to tie the game at 14. Late in the half, North Central led by seven, they're looking for more. Granquist would buy himself just enough time to find Travis Vincent open for yet another score with just 16 seconds left. That made it 28-14 Jets at the half, and the North Central Jets would go on to win the game 35-21 over Munising. So the Jets will get the winner of this game between Pickford and North Dickinson. We pick up the action in the second quarter, Pickford leading by two. Jared Hatfield was sacked there by Justin Clark for a loss of five on the play. But the Panthers would eventually drive down and score a TD on fourth and goal as Elijah May just barely gets the ball across the goal line for the score. And Pickford had a 20-12 lead. Here comes a two-point conversion. May gets his number called yet again. He goes up the gut and in. The Panthers had a 20-12 lead. Not to be outdone. After a 70-yard touchdown run, Matt Schultz will convert on the two-point conversion to pull the Nordics back to within two at 22-20. Late in the half, the Panthers were on the move once again. Hatfield decides to keep the ball on the QB keeper, and it turned to be a horrible decision. You want to know why? Matt Schultz, bang, ball loose. Justin Clark picks it up, and he'd run with it. However, North Dickinson couldn't convert the turnover into points before the half. The Nordics trailed by two at the half, but they outscored the Panthers 21-0 in the second half to win the game by a final of 41-22. to So next week, it'll be North Central at North Dickinson, I believe. Moving now to Division 7, the undefeated season continues for West Iron County. The Wycons are now 10-0 after a 21-7 victory over Traverse City St. Francis. West Iron County will host either Mancelona or Ishpeming next week. Congrats to the Wycons. In eight-man football, Cedarville took on Ingenine tonight. Less players means more room to run and more room to stomp in the mud as QB Joe Duncan finds plenty of room down the sideline for the game's first score. The Eagles, though, came to play, grinding it out on the ground and right up the gut. Austin Buss getting dirty and take a first down with him. That sets up the second and goal. Forrest MacArthur taking advantage of some great blocking, and the Eagles are on the scoreboard. But here comes that Duncan guy again. He loves to run 
like a free horse. Another long run and another Cedar Bill lead. But all oh, those Eagles, they aren't fooled by the Trojan horse. And they move on. Yes, Ingenine pulls the upset tonight, 28-26 over the Trojans. Well, congrats to Ingenine because they will have their hands full next week with Rapid River. I can guarantee you that. The Rockets defeated Posen 60-25. Quarterback Jake Pearson. What more can you say about this guy? Eight touchdowns. Yes, I said eight. Five on the ground and three through the air as the Rockets won yet again. So we know which teams are moving on and which teams are done. But today was just the beginning of the playoffs here in the UP. Several teams will be in action tomorrow. The Hematites know what it takes to win a state title. Last season, Ishpeming defeated Lincoln Alcona, Mancelona, Lake City, Puamo Asphalia, and Detroit Loyola to win the championship in Division 7. The Hematites will open the playoffs tomorrow afternoon at home against a team they faced last year in the playoffs in Mancelona. Ishpeming defeated the Ironmen last year by a final of 32-0. It, it, it's a little bit different. I mean, for us, just knowing that, you know, it's attainable. You know, you always talk about it. It's always your goal. Uh, you know, we, we did it last year. It's extremely hard to do it. Things have to go your way, but it is attainable. So, uh, uh, you know, we, we got to be focused. And if we're not focused, any one of these teams can knock us off, and our kids realize that. I mean, every year we play Mancelona, it's always a battle. I mean, they're a decent program over there, but... I mean, we're going to come out and we're going to come ready to play because we got big goals. All of our guys are just as hungry this year as we are last year. I mean, we have a target on our backs, but we're just going to come in every week and come ready to play. The Hematites and Ironmen have kickoff set for 1 p.m. in their Division 7 contest tomorrow afternoon. Just down the road from Ishpeming at Nagani, the Miners will begin their playoff march in Division 6 tomorrow afternoon as well. Nagani will take on the 6-3 Bulldogs from Indian River Inland Lakes. The Bulldogs are a member of the Ski Valley North Conference. Nagani finished the year 8-1 and, and they feel pretty good about their chances to win their first state title since 2002. You know, we had a lot of kids that were on the team last year and uh, uh, the playoffs bring a couple different things. They bring Joe in, they bring Sarah real quick and, and uh, you know you're only as good as your next game, and if you lose, you're done. You turn your equipment in. If you win, you, you get the privilege of playing another week, and uh, the guys know that, and they sense that, and there's been a, uh, almost a sense of urgency this week uh, with our squad. We're taking it step by step, and uh, we're trying to make the most out of uh, every opportunity that we have in this playoff uh, run here. Yeah, we're just getting ready for, uh, for their team. They, uh, they got some fast guys at our backs, and we're just uh, working on our technique in order to make uh, shut them down, I guess. Kickoff from Miner Stadium is also tomorrow at 1 p.m. The Hematites and Miners won't be the only two UP teams in action on Saturday. In Division 5, Houghton will travel to Menominee to take on the Maroons at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Kingsford is below the bridge. They will play at Grayling against the Vikings. The Flivers and Vikings will kick off at 1. And the Marquette Redmen will take on the Midland Chemics also at 1 p.m. Midland defeated Marquette last season in the playoffs by a final of 42-7. Welcome back to the Frenzy. Let's get straight to the volleyball action tonight in Marquette between Grand Valley State and Northern Michigan. The Lakers and Wildcats tangled in Marquette with first place on the line in the GLIAC North Division. Both teams were 10-1 and one coming into this one. Early on in the first set, NMU serving. The Lakers would try to go on the attack, but Alex Larson from the Department of Rejection would, spike the, would block the spike. And at that point to Northern, a great serve by Alex Larson forced GVSU to just return the ball, and that proved to be costly as Kalisha Harley would dish it to Lena Lopes and look out below as whoo, Lena, one of seven kills on the night, and that tied the first set at six apiece. The Lakers came to play this evening, no doubt about it. Abby Aiken would take advantage of an off pass by NMU for the Laker kill. The first set was close throughout its entirety. The Cats on the attack coming up again, Alex Berger to Harley, and there would be Larson on the right side for yet another hammer. And that tied the first set at 22 apiece. However, in the end, this one was close, but Grand Valley State gets the better of Northern by a final of 3-0. All sets were within 25-23, 25-22, 25-22. The Wildcats will have their hands full with Fair State tomorrow at 4. The Bulldogs won at Tech in four sets. Shelby Jones, Kendall Ward, each with 14 kills for the Huskies. Madeline Haven chipped in with 42 assists. Let's go talk some soccer. Huskies forward Lexi Harrowig scored two goals in just over two minutes. As Tech wins it 3-1 at Malone, Walsh and Northern played to a 1-1 tie. On the ice, Michigan Tech fell in overtime to Michigan 3-2. Andrew Kopp scored the game winner with just over 90 seconds left in OT to give Michigan the win. Tech's two goals came from C.J. Ike and Blake Piedla. Phoenix Copley stopped 40 Wolverine shots. Michigan, Northern Michigan and Alaska, no score quite yet in that one.